time. Hi, it's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello, come back here into the studio. What are you doing out there in the alley fighting with all those kids? Well, it ain't my fault, Abbott. Just after doing my same shovel detective series on a year, I've become so famous that I have to fight with the kids over my autograph. <laughs> Were you fighting with those kids over your uh, autograph? Why? They don't want to take it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get out this nonsense, Costello. What case are you going to do uh, your same shovel detective case for tonight? It's one of my most famous cases. I call it the fish market murder, or they killed him just for the halibut. Now, the makers of Scrapeful Shaving Cream present Sam Shovel, Private Detective. Scrapeful does away with shaving altogether. No brush, no lather. Just drop Scrapeful Shaving Cream on your face. Your whiskers grow inside your mouth, and you can bite them off. <laughs> Scientific laboratory tests prove that more doctors smoke Scrapo than any other shaving cream. <laughs> Men, enter the Scrapo shaving cream $50,000 cash prize contest. It's called Start the Music. <laughs> Here's all you have to do. Get a 35-piece orchestra together in your home. Have them start playing. And if we call you and we guess what they're playing, you send us $50,000. <laughs> and now to the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. People ask me how I became a detective. I guess it came natural. I've always liked to follow people. When I was a kid, I always followed girls. I don't know why I did it. Now I'm growing up, and it's different. I know why I did it. <laughs> Things are quiet in my little office, so I decided to brush my teeth. I remember my dentist's advice. Brush the back of your teeth. So I brushed the back of my teeth the hard way. The hard way. I stick the toothbrush through my ear. <laughs> I walk over to the pencil sharpener on the wall and start turning the handle. I realize I have forgotten something. Taking my long, pointy finger out of the sharpener. <laughs> I go to my desk to get a pencil. It's mighty warm in my little office. I'm perspiring, so I mop my brow. Putting the mop back in the bucket... I realize it's time for lunch. I take a Charlotte Russe out of my lunch box. I had just finished the Russe, settled down to enjoying Charlotte. <laughs> then the phone rang. Hello? This is Muggsy Mulligan speaking. I'm coming over to get you, Bulldog Drummond. My name ain't Bulldog Drummond. It's Sam Shovel. Oh, change your name, eh, Bulldog? Ain't this Walnut 8841? No, it's Granite 9903. Oh, change your number, eh, Bulldog? Is your office still in the tower building? No, it's in the star building. Oh, change your address, eh, Bulldog? Well, I'm coming over there and rip off your clothes. I'll tear off your coat. I'll tear off your shirt. I'll tear off your long red underwear. I don't wear long red underwear. Oh, change your underwear, eh, Bulldog? <laughs> Times like this, I wish my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homer Spice Squad, was here. All right. <laughs> Brush my teeth too hard. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott is the cop who solved the famous Hollywood jewel robbery case. He solved it the hard way. The hard way. He confessed. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. With my buddy, Lieutenant Abbott. I think he's worried. He's wrinkling his brow and screwing up his face. He don't have to wrinkle his brow. His face is screwed up the way it is. (laughs) 
Man, this is the filthiest looking office I've ever seen. What is that lump lying on the floor in that corner? That's the man. He's been lying on the floor in that corner for five days. I think he's dead. What makes you think he's dead? When I dust him, he don't wiggle. Damn. Who is that beautiful girl in that picture on your desk? Lieutenant, that gorgeous creature is a Pasadena society girl. I remember the day I met her. I could tell she was an aristocrat. She had class and breathing. Bowing low, I softly said to her, Cigar? <laughs> what did she say? Thanks. <laughs> I'll smoke it after dinner. <laughs> Look, Sam. Somebody threw a rock through the window. I'll examine the window. <laughs> mm, this is worse than I thought. What is it? The window is broken on both sides. <laughs> Look, Sam. Sam, what does the note say? It says that you two guys are smart. You'll start traveling right away. Who's it signed by? The Santa Fe Railroad. <laughs> Are you Sam Shovel? I looked up. The most beautiful girl I'd ever seen was standing in the doorway. I spoke. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, you took my father up the river. You took my uncle up the river. You took my brother up the river. So what? Sam, have you still got your canoe? <laughs> I walked over to her. <laughs> Papa, if you come one step closer to me, I'll let you have it. Honey, I got a good mind to let you give it to me. <laughs> Sam Shovel, you're a brave detective. I like Felix, you know. Come to my arms, Sam. I'll give you a kiss that'll make your head spin. Come here. <laughs> Sam, Sam, you know, just make your head spin. Sam, is there anything I can do for you? Call my mother and tell her that whirling Sam won't be home for dinner. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Miss. Why have you come to Sam Double's office? There are two mugs who are trying to kill me. I live in a big house all alone, and I want you, Sam Double, to guard me. Sam, you can stay in the garage and guard me while I'm in the house. I'll take the key. Sam, you idiot. Don't you realize that those two mugs find you in the garage? They're liable to kill you. They find me in the garage. I deserve to get killed. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott talked me out of handling the case of Millie the Magnificent Murder. I'm alone again in my little detective office. I glance at the headlines in the paper. Three crooks wanted in Los Angeles. I thought they had enough crooks in Los Angeles. <laughs> I get all kinds of cases in this detective office. Last week I investigated the case of Magamara the banker. He committed suicide. He was sitting at his desk when suddenly he dived out of the window. His secretary was killed too. It happened so fast he didn't have time to get off his lap. Sam, I got here just in time. I found this guy hanging around outside of your office. Hey. All right, you got to get that wall, you guys. Put up your hands, hoppers. This time I've got you. Better do as he says, Lieutenant Abbott. He's just it. Listen, you guys, I'm going to give you guys something that's been coming to you for a long time. You've been trying to suck it, but now I'm going to see that you get it. Well, you got us cornered. Go ahead and give it to us. <laughs> Before Adam and Costello have their final split, we we'll bring you one more thought on this subject. And now, back for the final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello show. Costello, you ought to give up trying to be a detective. You 
you wouldn't know how drunk this dog was. Oh, no? Well, how about that scene that ran loose to get the park last night? He grabbed all the women's sick and stole their purses with their money. That's right. Well, double crying, this scene is with their money. That guy is falling into the cup with him. Do you think they ought to get back the money? Oh, good night. Oh, good night.